said it before, and I'm going to say it again. There is no place in this league for that kind of behavior, LeBron James said of the news. And today we are going to tell you how other NBA players reacted to Robert Sarver's actions. What is actually going on? Well, join us to get started. Well, did you know that American businessman and Phoenix Suns team owner Robert Sarver was suspended for one season and fined $10 million? But what happened? Well, he was actually suspended after an independent law firm wrapped an investigation into his behavior that included accusations of racism, misogyny, and bullying in the workplace. The NBA said in a statement, an independent investigation found Sarver engaged in conduct that clearly violated common workplace standards as reflected in team and league rules and policies. This conduct included the use of racially insensitive language, unequal treatment of female employees, sex-related statements and conduct, and harsh treatment of employees that on occasion constituted bullying. The initial allegations came to light in an ESPN report last year. The investigation, which interviewed 320 people and scrutinized 80,000 documents and videos, was prompted by an ESPN article in November of 2021. It was reported that many then-current and former Suns employees described a toxic environment of racism and misogyny during Sarver's tenure as the team owner. The report included several stories of Sarver making racially insensitive remarks, including asking his former coach Earl Watson why he could not say the N-word if Golden State Warrior star Draymond Green can say it, passing around photos of his wife in a bikini. The report detailed several incidents and allegations of Sarver creating an if-you-don't-like-it-there's-the-door environment in the organization, one former executive had told ESPN. In the case of the October 30th, 2016 game versus the Warriors, Sarver and his lawyers wrote that Sarver did not have that conversation with Watson, but had one with a Suns player who had received a technical foul for what they said was using the N-word during the game. Sarver said he encouraged the player to appeal the technical foul because Green had used the word in the game. The technical foul was later rescinded by the league. Sarver even denied Watson's characterization of the incident and said, This is absolutely untrue. I remember the game and topic clearly. I, of course, never used the word myself. During this conversation, I said N-word without saying the full word. The word itself never crossed my lips. Let me be crystal clear. I never once suggested on that night that I should be able to say the N-word because a player or a black person uses it. Now, another former basketball operations staffer described the environment as a clown show. Guys are jumping up and down looking ridiculous, and I'm getting texts from coaches around the league like, what are you guys doing? It becomes more of a circus, and let's stand up and clap and appease Robert as opposed to doing what our actual job is, which is trying to coach the basketball game, the staffer said. It's barely a slap on the wrist and shows us the league truly doesn't stand for diversity, equity, or inclusion. I'm grateful to have the validation after being told I was insane, a bitch, and being dramatic. That definitely lets me breathe a little, but I'm angry. The league failed us when they had the opportunity to stand behind its values. A former staffer who spoke to ESPN for the initial 2021 story told ESPN. The report is peppered with denials about the allegations with Sarver making the denials through his legal team. Sarver denied the incident regarding Green and Watson and denied using any racially insensitive language. I've never called anyone or any group of people the N-word or referred to anyone or any group of people by the N-word, either verbally or in writing. I don't use that word. It is abhorrent and ugly and denigrating and against everything I believe in. Sarver stated. Now, however, while the NBA fines Sarver the maximum amount possible under its rules, the report stated it makes no finding that Sarver's conduct was motivated by racial or gender-based animus. According to the NBA, the investigation revealed that the team owner repeated the N-word when recounting the statements of others at least five times. There also were instances of inequitable conduct toward female employees, including sex-related comments and inappropriate comments on employees' appearances. The NBA said Sarver engaged in instances of inequitable conduct toward female employees, made many sex-related comments in the workplace, made inappropriate comments about the physical appearance of female employees and other women, and on several occasions engaged in inappropriate physical conduct toward male employees. 
and by now he has been suspended for one year and fined $10 million by the NBA. Now, while the NBA stated that Sarver cooperated fully with the investigative process, league sources said that he was unaccepting of the idea that he deserved a one-year suspension and a $10 million fine for his behavior. According to the sources, the punitive part of the process became largely acrimonious. While I disagree with some of the particulars of the NBA's report, I would like to apologize for my words and actions that offended our employees. I take full responsibility for what I have done. I am sorry for causing this pain and these errors in judgment are not consistent with my personal philosophy or my values. I accept the consequences of the NBA's decision. This moment is an opportunity for me to demonstrate a capacity to learn and grow as we continue to build a working culture where every employee feels comfortable and valued," Sarver said in a statement through the Suns. The investigation led by New York-based law firm Watchell Lipton found that Sarver engaged in conduct that clearly violated common workplace standards as reflected in team and league rules and policies. So how do NBA players react to that? NBA Commissioner Adam Silver already knew how some of the league's players felt about the investigation and its findings, and during the news conference in New York, he said, Yes, I have talked to some players. Those have been private conversations. I will leave it for the players to speak directly how they feel. One of the first players who spoke up about the topic was LeBron James and Chris Paul. They both tweeted out their disappointment, anger, and frustration. LeBron tweeted, Read through the Sarver stories for a few times now. I gotta be honest, our league definitely got this wrong. I don't need to explain why. Y'all read the stories and decide for yourself. I said it before and I'm gonna say it again. There is no place in this league for that kind of behavior. I love this league and I deeply respect our leadership, but this isn't right. There is no place for misogyny, sexism, and racism in any work place. It doesn't matter if you own the team or play for the team. We hold our league up as an example of our values and this ain't it. Chris Paul tweeted, like many others, I reviewed the report. I was and am horrified and disappointed by what I read. This conduct, especially towards women, is unacceptable and must never be repeated. I am of the view that the sanctions fell short in truly addressing what we can all agree was atrocious behavior. My heart goes out to all the people that were affected. After James and Paul took to Twitter, the NBPA tweeted a statement from its executive director, Tamika Tremoglio. Yesterday, the NBA released the findings from the independent investigation by Watchell, Lipton, Rosen, and Katz involving Sun's governor, Robert Sarver. Mr. Sarver's reported actions and conduct are horrible and have no place in our sport or any workplace for that matter. Another NBA legend, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, came out recently commenting on the situation on his website, agreeing with other legendary players that the punishment was not sufficient. How is it possible that owners using the N-word and harassing female employees is still a thing? Because some wealthy team owners still have a plantation mentality that their money insulates them from common decency or the law. They see themselves as elevated to godlike status and are confused and angry when everyone around them isn't grateful to be in their presence. Instead of receiving into history where it belongs, this arrogant paternal attitude has gained traction since the ascension of Trump and his acolytes. They have demeaned women by denying from their reproductive rights, banished the LGBTQ plus community, and diminished blacks by curtailing their voting, Kareem said. Kareem also argues how Sarver is just one part of a much bigger problem, which he identifies as a conservative backlash against minority groups that have gained more power and influence over recent years. He also argues how Sarver could do these things for 18 years, and nobody has stopped him until now. So what do you think about Robert Sarver's actions? Do you think the punishment is sufficient? Let us know in the comments down below.